Hey guys, this is Tanner. Uh, I'm sure most of you know I am the left-handed shooter, so this isn't the most natural thing for me. Now the nice part about this Galil Ace is this thing is fully ambidextrous. I mean, as you can see, got a magazine release on this side. Got one on this side as well. I got a safety selector on this left side of the gun, which is nice if I'm right-handed, but my issue is if I'm left-handed, I'm not reaching that. So, if I'm sitting here, let's say I'm just looking down, I have my eyes on my target, there's no way I can reach that. And to put this on fire, I have to awkwardly move my hand. It's the biggest con I've found so far with this rifle. It's not the end of the world, just something to be aware of. One of the other nice features about this Galil is it not only has a collapsible stock, but this is also a folding stock. I know what you're wondering. Yes, the gun can fire and operate with the stock folded. It doesn't have to be extended. So if you're in a situation where space is limited, this will work. You cannot fold it out like a badass though. So if you guys have not already watched our part one or our magazine testing part of the review, be sure to go and check that out. It's gonna be up here in the corner and that will really tell you all about all the different magazines that we've used, we've tested out, and the ones that don't work with this gun. Let's go and jump in and talk about one of the first cons that I have. The first and biggest problem that I have with this particular rifle, this is gonna be, you always wanna get the, the bad stuff out of the way first, is there's no bullet hole. There's nothing to hold that back. And honestly, you know, I'm so accustomed to having my ARs with the bolt hold that, you know, you're sitting here, you just charge it back, lock it in place, or when you've got the magazine in, it just locks in place, and you can always see that you're empty. Since we don't have that on this gun, you have to count your rounds. Because I'm sitting here going, I think I'm out, but I can't check it. I would have to literally stop and check. And personally, I just prefer to have a bolt hold. I know a lot of gun ranges require that you either have a flag or a bolt hold, so that way that you can shoot at. And honestly, it just makes it safer and easier for everybody if you can see into the barrel without having to, to have a flag in there. I like to be able to keep everything locked back and be able to just glance into the gun and see it. I do have some cons. I like the, the stock and I like the pistol grip okay, but I do have a major con with both of them. They're non-removable and in a world of modding every gun out there, I want to be able to say I want to have this stock and this pistol grip because honestly, why would you go any other route? I mean, yeah, they're, they're decent, but I want interchangeability. And the way that this tube is designed, it's not even designed as a, a commercial or a... So another con that I don't like is that you have this backup iron sight that's really not removable. And I'm sure there is a way to take it off, but to me, I feel like you would just break it if you tried to take it on and off. It is nice it looks great but we were not able to get the gun sighted in even to 25 yards or to 100 yards at 25 so what that means is that we're, we're trying to get the round to be two inches below our point of impact at that 100 yards is where we're aiming at and i could not get the gun sighted in at that correct distance so i did have a problem with that but since putting it since i'm just going to put a uh, scope on it or tanner's going to put a scope on it anyways I wasn't really too worried about it, but I would like to be able to see this removable or at least better designed for being able to put a scope on here because this is a 308. I would be fine with this on the 762 by 39 but for the 308, I really want to have a scope on this. I want to be able to shoot distance. I want to be able to hunt with this and this just kind of touches my scope touches the bell and I don't like that. 
those are really all the cons that I have for this gun at this time. I'm sure as we shoot more of this gun over the years, we'll see more things that we like or dislike or, or learn how to like. But let's actually start talking about the pros of this gun. All right, so like I said, let's talk about the pros about this gun. One major pro is if you can get it sighted in, you have backup iron sights. That's awesome. Any gun that comes with backup iron sights with the gun, I think that is just awesome. Because honestly, having the backup iron sights is really as good as having sights. You need to have them just in case something breaks. I'm hard on my guns, and I know that if I am too hard on my, my scopes, I can break them. So having backup iron sights means that if I'm out in the field and I'm hunting, I can just switch over to these and I'm fine. I really like the fact that they went with the SR25 style magazines. There is the FAL magazines, there are a bunch of 308 magazines that are on the market. You've got the AR10 magazines, and they are all slightly different, but these are becoming popular. These are what people are using in their guns. This is what I have a majority of my, my stock in is in the SR25 style magazine. So it was really nice that they went and put that with this gun instead of going with the proprietary magazine. I don't get that. To me, that just doesn't make sense. Having a magazine that's going to cost you so much more money, to me, I don't want to spend more money on a gun and buying these specialized magazines because the company couldn't just go and design something a little bit better and make it use a standard magazine. I don't like that with the AUG. I don't like that with a lot of guns, but you know, it, it's you've got to have some give and take, and this one, they made sure that we didn't have to have a, a takeaway from that. I really like the fact that this is a quad rail system that we can go and have all of our accessories on here. As you can see, I already have the bipod on here. I could run a laser or a flashlight. I could run anything on here that I wanted, and to me, that's really great. One thing that I want to get for future reviews is a Picatinny rail GoPro mount. So that way that while we're shooting, we can show you guys the perspective of the shooter. So you can see what we're shooting, what we're looking at. And that's what these rails are really nice for. It's not gonna block anything. I just put it onto the side and I'm good to go. One thing that Tanner brought up that is really awesome is that this gun is built to be ambidextrous. Meaning that we have an ambidextrous safety Although we don't like it, and we do have some cons with it, I do like the right-handed, it's really nice to me, but the best part is that you have an ambidextrous mag release. And honestly, if you're gonna build a brand new gun, not modeled after something else, why not throw these in? These are just awesome. And with so many more shooters out there, giving you an edge like that, that takes the cake right there. Mil spec tube. And I would like that. I would like to be able to say, yeah, I want a different stock. And I'm sure that there are going to be companies who are going to make aftermarket parts or already make aftermarket parts, but you can't change out that pistol grip. This is one full lower that's all just molded plastic. And that's nice, but it doesn't give me the options that I want. If I wanted a little bit of uh, tackiness, like a rubberized grip, I can't do that. I would have to go and add something else. And my last favorite thing about this gun that I'm so thankful that they did, they did not put an A2 style uh, muzzle device on here. I'm sorry, but I am tired of those. Why? Why can't everybody just kind of have a slightly nicer one? Why can't we just come up with something that's a little bit better than that and just put it on all the guns, on different guns, have everybody not we, as an industry, need to boycott the A2 style. It's outdated, it doesn't work great, and this one, it's great. It, it looks nice on this gun, and it's not the A2. I like that. Brass is going way over there. The recoil is very manageable through this platform. Uh, one of the big differences is it's a 
short stroke gas piston versus direct impingement, but it's very manageable. Could also be the fact that it's not a uh, A2 bird cage on the end of this barrel, and it's an actual muzzle brake. But I don't know anything. So, as I said, the Galil Bean in 308 is very similar to the AK. This gun is designed based off of this rifle. And this is my Century Arms RAS 47. And I really like it because it does have some modularity. I can change out the stock, I can change out pistol grips, I can change out four ends, which I can't do on this gun. So, really, what they went after is a combination between these two guns right here, the AR and the AK. And they kind of put them together in a way that I really like and I also have some issues with. I like the modularity of this. I like the reliability of this. I get some, I get the reliability, but I don't really get the modularity that I get out of this one. To me, that's not a deal breaker, but I would really prefer to have more modularity like this. I would rather have a Galil and these two guns where that one just kind of takes over all of the function and this one is my dedicated marksman rifle and this one is my dedicated funman rifle. That one should be my all-purpose rifle. These are not my all-purpose. Well, we're at the end of our review and all I can say is I've really enjoyed working with these guns. The IWI products are just great. I do want to talk a little bit about a comment that was made and I, I cannot guarantee that I said this the way that I meant to say it, but when I talk about how the gun is built, how the Israelis built this gun so that way that you're not getting dust in the gun, you're, you're keeping it clean. Something that I've really noticed between uh, gun manufacturers is that they don't manufacture guns necessarily for the climate that they may be put into, but the climate that they're being built in. So we as Americans typically build our guns to what our fighting standard would be in the United States. We're not building them so they have huge compartments where sand can get into the gun and fall out, like the AK was built. The AK was built so that way that it could be put into a very harsh climate, which Russia is a lot harsher climate than we have typically here in the United States. So when the Israelis did build this gun, while it is an export gun, you have com countries like Chile who are using the Galil, they're building it in their climate, for their climate, because that's kind of what we as humans design, is that we only design stuff if we're required. If somebody says, hey, these are the features that I want, can you build this gun for my country? And if it's not a, a purpose-built rifle, typically the gun's just built to whatever the, the manufacturer's standard is, the idea of that country. So, correct. The Galils are not being used over in Israel right now. They're great guns. I don't know why they're not, but no, they are not being used by Israel. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Atticus James with GearsOfGuns.com. I want to say a big thank you to Tanner for letting us shoot his rifle. I know that this is a review gun and that he just bought this gun, but it's always nice to be able to get these guns for review from IWI and then have the ability to purchase them at a later date. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Bye.